Let's go through a couple examples to clarify what we're talking about and to make sure that this makes sense. Now, let's say you're supposed to make a silica sol gel, and you're given that you're supposed to use one mole of TEOS, tetraethyl orthosilicate. I know before I wrote tetraethoxysilane, they're the same chemical, they just and the same initials, they're just two different ways of saying the name th same thing, which is why I get confused. But to this five moles of TEOS, we're also going to add five moles of ethanol. Now the ethanol in this case, it's just a dispersing solvent. It's just to dilute everything down. If we use just pure TEOS, we'd have a really, really dense little puck of glass. We want something that's low density, a lot of open porosity, so we're going to dilute it with just this inactive ethanol. And then we're going to use four moles of the H2O in order to hydrolyze this. Now what we want to know, if we combine these three chemicals, we're not going to use an acid or a base in this case, that much water, given enough time, it's going to make a gel. What we want to know is, with this, what is the actual uh, silica density going to be? Which is, if you were to take this final gel and subtract out all the water, so make it so there's no more water in there, dry it out, we'll talk about how to do that, what is the actual density of just the silica going to be? If you... so... Yeah, just what is the actual silica solid density of our gel? We're going to need some material constants before we continue. So for the TOS, ethanol, water, and the final product, the silica, write down the molecular weights of each and the density of each in grams per cc. And just a reminder, cc, a cubic centimeter, is the same thing as a milliliter. I'll be using those kind of interchangeably, but they're the same volume. So how are we going to go about solving this? To find the density of the silica in the gel, we need to know that one mole of TEOS, how much uh, silica is that going to make? For that one mole of TEOS, just, just how much silica do we get in grams or in milliliters or cc, whatever you want. So how much silica are we going to form by that one mole of TEOS? We're also going to need to know what the total volume of our gel will be. When we add all this liquid together, how much volume is going to take up? And then the density of just the silica network is going to be pretty simple, equal to the mass of just the silica divided by the volume of the gel. So let's go through each individual component. First, let's start with the TEOS. One mole of the TEOS multiplied by its molecular weight, so the 208.3 grams per one mole, and then divided by the density, or times the inverse, so times 1 cc over 0.94 gives us 223 milliliters of TEOS. That's just how much volume one mole of TEOS gives you. We can do the same thing for our ethanol. So 5 moles times the molecular weight of ethanol times, or divided by the density of ethanol gives us the total number of milliliters of ethanol in the solution. Same thing with the water. Multiply it by its molecular weight and divide it by its density and we'll get the number of milliliters of our water. If we add all of these together, we get the total volume of our gel because we put this much of each component in and we're making an assumption here that the gel doesn't shrink, which is a pretty fair assumption. So we put it in, it gels, it doesn't change in volume. So that 586 milliliters is the total volume of our gel. That's one of our pieces of information, so we'll go back up and keep track of that right up here. So total volume of the gel equals 586 milliliters. All right, now density. In order to figure out the mass of the silica, we're going to need to make an assumption here. We're going to assume that that one mole of TEOS directly creates one mole of SiO2. And now this is a fair assumption, so let's look back at what the TEOS is. TEOS is one silicon with four ethoxy groups bonded to it. And silica, silicon dioxide, is one silicon group with a bunch of oxygens. It looks like there's four oxygens for each SI, but keep in mind that this keeps going off to the right, and so each of those oxygens is actually shared by another silicon. So stoichiometrically, it's SiO2. One, mo one molecule TEOS gives us one molecule of SiO2, so it's fair to say that one mole of TEOS, assuming all the TEOS is converted, all the TEOS reacts, will give us one mole of SiO2. So. Let's go through the mass of the silica in the final gel after all the TEOS is reacted. We have our one mole of SiO2 times the molecular weight of SiO2, molecular weight of silica, 
gives us the mass of silica. In this case, pretty easy, 44 grams of SiO2 is our final gel. So go back up, mass of the silica is 44 grams, and then our overall silica density is 44 grams over 5.86 milliliters, which gives us 0 0.0075 grams per cc. 7.5 or 75 milligrams per cc. That's really low. That's a pretty low, it's typical for a silica aerogel, but that's a really low density. And it's especially low for something like a ceramic. Getting getting a ceramic that that's low that's that light is pretty difficult. Now let's take a look at just how light that is. Just how much if it's 75 milligrams per cc, what is the porosity of that? Just how much of this is solid network and how much of it is just open air? All right, to get the porosity, we know we have that one mole of SaO2 times molecular weight gives us 44 grams of SaO2 divided by the density of SiO2 is 20.66 cc's or milliliters, take whatever you want, of SiO2. So that's the volume that the SiO2 occupies. So our percent solids is going to be the volume of the solids, in this case that's only SiO2, divided by the total volume of the gel. 20.66 divided by 586 gives you 3.53 percent solids. Of the total gel, only three and about three and a half percent of it is actually solid, which is not very much. But let's go do the conversion and convert that into porosity, percent porosity, which is just if that's our solids, one one hundred percent minus three point five percent gives us ninety six point four seven percent porosity. That's really high. That's really high porosity. Ninety six point about ninety six and a half percent of this is just open space. It's just poor volume. For a ceramic, that's really hard to do, especially, I mean, think of melt casting, you can't get that. Um, powder processing, even if you put in a huge amount of binder that you then are just going to like, oh, I'll just burn this off or etch it off, you can't get up to that high of a porosity. So sol gel is pretty much one of the main ways to get a solid piece of something that such, has such open porosity. All right. Let's look at some extra practice as the final thing for the today. If you were to take one mole of TEOS, 10 moles of ethanol, and two moles of acetone this time, and combine that with uh, five moles of water, what will your final silica density, density be? So do the same thing. Find what your silica density will be and your percent porosity. Then, as an extra exercise, now take milliliters. So 3 milliliters of TEOS, 3 milliliters of ethanol, 0.8 milliliters of water. Do the same thing with that. Now, one thing to be careful of this, look at this, look at the stoichiometry on this when you finally convert it into moles. So what is the molar ratio of water to TEOS in this recipe on the right? Um, it's not 4. Now, remember the TEOS has 4 ethoxy groups. Each one needs to be hydrolyzed. So each one needs one mole of ethanol, but we or one mole of water, but we don't have enough. It's actually, you know, it's less than four, and I'll leave you to calculate how much it is. So the question becomes, is that okay? Is it okay to not have everything completely hydrolyzed uh, right at the start? And if so, where does the where would extra water come from? So now last is a bit of incentive. Um, the recipe that's on the left, so the one mole TS, the one with the acetone. Have that answer ready by Monday, Monday morning, and you, you'll get an opportunity to use that to earn a, a dairy store ice cream. I'm going to have some dairy store ice cream passes, and if you have that ready to go Monday morning, you'll be in good shape to earn a pass. Thanks. See you Monday.